cover photo for this episode for you guys should be like, you know, those yellow warning signs with the exclamation points and then like say like dating Iranian at your own risk. Exactly. That's oh. it. I think you've just volunteered to design that for us there. Excellent. <laughs> so I guess somebody has uh, contacted us and they want to know about some warnings or things they need to know about before dating an Iranian or maybe over your side of the pond, they'll be saying Persian uh, more so. Maybe there's maybe there's an interesting point in that sort of difference between Persian and Iranian is when you go on dates over there. Are you do you describe yourself as Persian or Iranian or both? Well, I was gonna say is that, a thing? That, <laughs> that there are a lot of um, a lot of people that like to comment on the fact that Persia isn't a thing anymore and that the Persian Empire ended a long time ago. Because we uh, we made a few TikToks for Persian Girl Podcast. And people would comment on them and be like, how can you be a Persian girl if Persian girls don't exist? Persia doesn't exist. You're not Persian. And I'm just like, okay, fine. Call me Iranian. Like to me, it doesn't make a difference. It's just whatever is in my head at the moment is what what's going to come out of my mouth. Like, I can either say Iranian or Persian. It's not like a pride thing for me that I'm only going to say Persian. Like to me, it doesn't make a difference. I just think Persian sounds sexier. Well, I sorry, I also have another thing about this question. So it's like, what are some warnings before I date someone? I mean, there's two ways to look at it, like warnings about them or warnings about how you should act on this date. Yeah, do tell, do tell. Let's let's go into it. Um, I think one war warning is get like study about the idea of tarof, like you really need to like understand the concept before you go on a date with a Persian person. Because any Persian, yeah, like some Persians can get really offended if you don't understand that they're tarofing and then like you don't offer them whatever you offered them a second time or third time. Like I know yeah, like yeah. the first mm. time I went to an American's house for dinner and their parents offered me a plate for food and I was like, no, I'm okay. And then they didn't offer again. And then I just sat there uh, like for an hour rude. starving and watched everyone else eat because I was too embarrassed to be like, I was tar roughing, like you're supposed to offer it twice. Like I didn't know what to say to yeah. them. So I just sat there and starved. <laughs> So, so, so if you go to a cafe or a bar, you, uh, you know, grab your beer or wine and then you're like, Befarma, you offer, <laughs> you have to play the game in the, in the bar. Is that it? Offer the wine before you start drinking. No, I think she just means that general joking, concept, I'm like joking. you need to understand how to, oh, okay. But like, no, that is true because the communication is not so literal as it would be with Americans here, for example. Mm -hmm. Like there is this, and that's, that's kind of part of the charm and the flirtation. I mean, that is why so many, you know, women from other cultures are attracted to Persian men because that adds this like layer of complexity and charm to the mm -hmm. interaction, I think. Yeah, I mean, again, there's there are good things. Uh, I think the person who asked this question is aware of that, which is why they're willing to maybe um, accept the downsides of dating a Persian. Yeah. I guess any uh, cross-cultural dating is going to, yeah, there's going to be their own different ways. And I, I say I say that because I've grown up in England and I've sort of learned how things go there and coming to Iran has, has been a bit confusing now. Uh, there's some similarities, I guess, with Iran and America and that in England we're, we're very much, uh, as we say in Persian, dongi or uh, going Dutch. Uh, it, it's it's kind of weird. It, it's not so weird, but you know, it's very nice if the guy offers to pay and the, and the woman will probably accept. But I think in a lot of interactions, it's sort of like either, you know, a best I'll, I'll get this, you get the next one, or going Dutch on uh, the bill. So something that was odd for me and probably doesn't make me look great in any capacity is that um it was odd for me in iran at first going on a date and um you know the check comes and it's like oh okay i'll get this then and uh and not only that i'll 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 get the bill and there's zero recognition of of getting the bill i'm like okay i guess that's how it goes down here and yeah so uh, you don't split the check and when you pay for whatever you're having you don't expect a thank you afterwards so it rarely happens that a thank you will happen uh after is that odd to hear like from your side is or is that expected in a similar way personally as a courtesy i always offer to pay 
even though on a first date, if I like personally, if I do offer and you actually take my offer, I am going to be turned off by that. But I offer to pay, <laughs> yeah. like a, let's say it's like a second or third date. I wouldn't mind getting the next one or like splitting, but like, I feel like a first date, like there's different things expected of people. Like a guy's not going to be like so turned on by the fact that if I show up with my hair in a bun and zero makeup and sweatpants, you know, like I'm still getting ready mm. for you and you're still like paying for me. Like you're still doing that like societal thing that people expect. Mm. So yeah, I do expect someone to pay on the first date, but I always offer and I'll always say thank you. But um, yeah. mm -hmm. I guess in Iran, it's just not even a question it's just the it's so automatically expected there i, I guess um there are persian girls in america who do that they're just like they're not even going to flinch when the check comes they're just going to sit there like perfectly still they're not offering at all that's just, you know mm -hmm. what i mean and that's very traditional whereas like me and natalie are both persian girls but we're saying we always like i'm i'm too hijalati to not offer like mm -hmm. i you know I, I don't know how to be that woman although i, I fantasize i think it it is interesting to be that woman like maybe they're the real feminists but um I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kidding but uh maybe but no we offer but then also this is something to expect uh yeah persian guys typically they they will pay in america yeah it's usually the ones who like will definitely pay or just ones who like come from immigrant families it has nothing to do with wealth from my experience yeah uh if you're mm -hmm. super american they yeah they usually will Again, like not trying to generalize, but it's more common for them to actually think that you're splitting it. But mm. no, actually, it's not a general thing here either. There are different people, different attitudes. They do offer, they do thank you. And uh, like I'm talking about the ladies, of course. But that's it. I mean, if someone gets to the point that they're getting the check and they pay the check, of course, and they don't get a thank you as if like they were supposed to do it, well, don't be shocked. Mm. Yes, a word of warning to those wishing to date at least a, an Iranian inside Iran and mm -hmm. yes, kind of half the case so it seems uh, over in America. So uh, what sort of, I'm, I'm interested to know what sort of topics uh, might be discussed or what type of topics are brought up by Iranians uh, during dates and uh, we can probably start it off here Mohammed by talking about the ones that we often hear, or at least I'll speak for myself mm -hmm. uh, in this case. It's always interesting for me. It's it, it, one of the first things that will, the, in the tick list of things that you'll get asked is going to be where you live. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. a big indicator as to, you know, okay, what, what's the type of person that I'm, I'm chatting with? And I guess it's kind of sussing out the socioeconomic sort of differences mm. uh, between the two. And then next on the list would be, it's always interesting for me that sort of Equally as much, if not more so, asking what the family does is kind of more important, equally as important as what you do uh, for a living. And I can understand why that would be uh, the case, I guess, uh, or I think in Iran that happens because... Uh, Wealth is more family related yeah, we than feed individual. Off the parents. Yeah, we so we're suck blood from the parents. Leeches. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then it will come to, uh, sorry, the list goes on. So, third would be like studying, like, what have you studied? Mm. Uh, I guess they're sort of sussing out what sort of level of education. They're the I top three. Really you go. Good. <laughs> like I just don't want to forget my my thought but that's such a good way to put it like for for us girls it's yeah the guys are usually like sussing out not only our socioeconomic status but they're like sussing out where we are on the scale of like one to ten of being a khanum they're like let's let's test out her like khanum oh, okay. levels and like for mm. anyone who doesn't know that means like time? lady uh I don't know. I think it's just like your not only your demeanor, but like yeah, I don't know. It's it's like whether you talk too much or do you know what I mean? Like maybe if you're over opinionated or like you know more about a certain topic, like politics or something than them, they're gonna be like, ugh, like she she must be a <laughs> like I don't know. I don't know. I just <laughs> I'm starting to get to this point where some people think that, but yeah, it's usually like. Oh, like where do you hang out like where are your friends from what's your family's last name um i think the, yeah the first date with persian iranian is it's all about the kind of no shame sussing out of that person like it's mm. oof. so it seems that you you'll change your behavior so if you have a date with an iranian guy you'll definitely be uh aware that I'm that person has an expectation i'm not changing any of my behavior but i mean oh good on you 
But you'll be at least you'll be aware that they have that expectation. You'll probably agitate that now. If anything, with you're Iranian right. guys, I purposely act overly <laughs> not Iranian just to piss them off and show them that like they can't expect certain things of me. Like something I like to do is I always like to tell guys about how I'm a horrible cook. And I tell them about how <laughs> I've uh, set toast on fire. <laughs> I get that. I get that on <laughs> on dates. I get that where girls yeah, where really girls immediately true. say how bad they are in the kitchen and it's like just okay. purposely like I'm not even that bad. Like yeah, like I'm not like the greatest. Like I make great eggs, but like I'm not even that <laughs> bad. It's just like I don't want anyone I mean, expecting so to speak. Speak just because I'm a girl, just because I'm Persian. Like everyone expects you to be this awesome cook. Just because you're a Persian girl, mm. so I'm like, don't expect anything of me. I don't owe you anything. Uh, yeah. But you do uh, cook gourmet sabzi well, right? I've never even tried. Mohammed, who are you asking for here, Mohammed? <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Can we can we flip this question back on you, or should we save this yeah, for our episode? Back. But like, do you do you really look for that in a girl you're trying to date or marry that she's a good cook? Mm, personally, me, no. I'll be impressed by that, but it's not it's not something that'll be a, a deal breaker or I'll, I'll, I'll be bothered about necessarily. I've I've cooked fest in June in my time, I'll have you know. Mm. So uh, I can handle my own in the kitchen. But uh, no, I, I, uh, those things, I, I think, personally speaking, I prefer a good head on shoulders, uh, as in someone who's got a bit of a brain. Some of the best relationships I had, neither of us could cook for shit. We still had a um, good relationship going for a long while. I mean, personally, I like to seek out guys that are good cooks. Because, like, if we both can't cook for shit, like, what are we going to do? Just order food all the time? Like, I want no, the guy to know like how to cook. Right. You know, if guys are allowed to expect a woman to know how to cook, I'm turning the tables around. I want a guy who can cook. I'm going to ask, what dish can you make best? What can you cook for me? You go experiment with uh, different ingredients and you make some things that are sometimes edible. So... <laughs> Sometimes it works out. I mean, the rest of the time it's going to be pizza and fries. Well, there's Mamani June. There's Mamani June who's going to be sending through the various sort of uh, plastic wrapped items throughout the week <laughs> that you can survive on. What you you ha? Huh. You know what I'm talking about. You get those. I got. I got. <laughs> I got to return all of those Tupperware uh, boxes. Remind me, Mohammed, to uh, return all those <laughs> Tupperware boxes. Uh, speaking of parents, I uh, there's one interesting point at least. That would uh, and I, actually, I'm interested to see whether it would, it's the same over there because in Iran, you're never really going to meet the parents of the person you're dating until you go for proposal day, the chastigari. I mean, is 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 that the way you guys act? You'll never, you know, if you're with parents out and let's yeah. say your boyfriend or someone you just started a date with said, "Oh, I'm around the corner and I I'll, I'll come and say hi," would you be like, "No, no, 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 no"? Don't meet Mom on June. I think personally, like from all my older cousins, like, yeah, I've never met anyone's girlfriend unless they were finally engaged. And then they come and do, we do like a Friday night Shabbat dinner with like her side of the family, our side of the family, all the cousins get to meet. And they, mm. at, sometimes they've been dating this person for like three, four years and none of us ever heard oh, of wow. them, met them, seen pictures with them. Nobody will post pictures with a boyfriend or girlfriend for the most part in the Persian community, hmm. unless it's an engagement picture. Um, oh, interesting. So I, I definitely think that is very relevant here. People won't really like if they're, especially if they're just messing around with someone and it's not serious, you don't want to be introducing a new girl every few months to your family. So yeah, they don't really introduce unless it's serious. My family. Yes. That's the way it goes that down. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I have so many cousins where, again, I, I mean, I guess I knew that they were seeing someone, but it wasn't out in the open. Um, and then, poof, out of nowhere, engagement, like, thing on Instagram. It's like, oh, wow. Like, I had, you know, it's so, it's so strange. Again, absurd to me, uh, mm. this, like, f this timeline and this format. I mean, mm -hmm. just don't post at well, all, my maybe. My cousin got married and i didn't know until a week before they got married and i think it's weird to hide things to that like to such an extent where like majority of the people in your life don't know you're with someone until you're engaged like i, I just think it's like mm. I, I i find it kind of weird we had a girl actually um like a family friend of mine like a year ago when the podcast was still fairly new and we were still anonymous she DM'd me. She's like, oh my God, like I recognize your voice. Like I know it's you. 
And she's like, mm -hmm. I just want to let you know, we had an episode where we spoke about how people don't post pictures until the engagement. And she's like, because of your episode, like I realized I didn't want to be one of those stereotypical girls. And she decided mm -hmm. to like start posting pictures with her and her boyfriend. Hmm. But dealing with uh, Iranian parents is always the same. I mean, if you want to be a stereotypical or not, that's a story. And uh, Iranian or Persian parents are uh, a different story. You cannot actually deal with them. I, yeah, I find uh, something different as well about uh, Iran is that, uh, speaking of marriage, is that you don't marry necessarily an individual, you marry a family. And that really is, is the sort of guiding, that's the sort of that's why a lot of the that's why it was confusing for me it took some time for me to sort of figure out how things were here in iran but yeah it's a group decision i mean it has to be and and we can go into detail as to why that's the case it's probably a bit obvious but yeah you'll you'll be making group decisions you'll yeah and i guess so hiding a uh, a partner is is sort of quite respectful that you don't drag the family into sort of uh, the potential of something failing or whatever so you only when you know it's absolute then you yeah, but then i also think that there's a danger there because i've noticed more recently in our generation more often than not after the engagement people are breaking up and these are couples that were dating for maybe three four five years and we're doing perfectly fine mm. and we're so happy together and meshed so well with each other and we're really on the same wavelength and then as soon as family gets involved, because family was never involved before the engagement, because they're, they kept yeah. those, their family lives so separate before then, it's after the engagement that they realize that their families don't connect, they don't relate to each other's families, and then they break up more often than not. And I, that's why I think it's a bad thing that people keep things so separate until the engagement, because like... Yeah. Don't get engaged if you really don't know the person's family yet, because in a Persian family, you are marrying the family. So, like, that's just something that... Oh, interesting catch-22 there. Well, I mean, my personal experience, like, I... My first serious relationship, I hid from my parents. At the same time, I knew that my father kind of held this stance that it would be him, like letting go of his pride or like lowering himself to be introduced to this person who I'm not engaged with or I'm not like really in a serious relationship with. He's like, well, I'm not going to sit at dinner with this person. I mentioned it, but not in this light before, but for my parents, but more so my father, it was like a pride thing for him to let go of to meet the person I was dating. But it ended up hurting all of us in the long run. I mean, because it's not just a matter of the engagement, but just uh, the relationship was really bad for me. And they kind of implied that anyways, but if if they had just met him earlier, then maybe I would have seen it. You know, if you see it in that context, sometimes it helps you realize it. So if I had seen the way he was interacting with my parents, and maybe I would have just, you know, so... I think it could save everyone a lot of time. Um, and now my parents... They don't think like, I mean, my mom never really felt like that, but neither of them, uh, they, they're not traditional in that sense anymore. Like if I'm seeing someone and I say, hey, I really like this person, it's, I think it's in, it's in their best in interest to, uh, to meet the person first before, you know, before it gets too serious yeah. with me and like, you know what I mean? Um, so, but a lot of families don't do that. Yeah, excellent, excellent points there. I, uh, speaking of the marriage thing, I was I was just wondering as far as like time to marriage, is there anything unique about the way Iranians, Persians are with that? Is there a certain, you know, you wouldn't dare date more than two years, for example, if you're Iranian? There's, um, if I'm not mistaken, over in my experience in England, it can go on for quite some time and probably never lead to marriage. Yeah, I mean, my cousin, she's Persian and she was... She's engaged now, actually, but she was with her boyfriend for like five, six years, maybe more. But they were together since they were like teens. Um, mm. And I remember one time we were at a dinner and she told this Persian girl, like, she's like, oh, are you engaged? She's like, no, we're, we're just like, we're, he's my boyfriend. And then she's like, oh, well, 
uh, how long have you been together? And when she said, like, how many years they've been together, this Persian girl looked shocked. She, like, as if someone, hmm. like, said they had cancer. She was like, oh, my God. Like, oh my God. it was so sorry. I know that's fucked up. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I'm just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's probably a difference here between uh, respective areas as well, because normally, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Mohammed, but, you know, people will live with their parents until they get married. Again, it's the family to family sort of uh, scenario here. So in a sense, you're not really gonna have that sort of type of time with your partner that you could probably afford or have in, let's say America, as you guys would experience, or in England where, you know, you might sort of get to the point where you would live together. Yes, maybe the parents wouldn't uh, see one another, but you would have that time together. But in Iran, that's very unlikely. There are people who, actually go rent out a place or one of them already have their own place but it's very rare honestly it's very rare like most of the people they live with their parents they won't leave before they get married it doesn't matter if they're boys or girls so that is an issue because you don't get to spend time as a couple with your partner yeah so would your would your parents be shocked if you were living with your boyfriend is that still an iranian thing over, over there even though it's probably not unusual for that situation to happen in america i feel like a lot of persian parents in america like wouldn't allow it um because mm. i think it's still a stereotype like um when we first started the podcast like a few older not like that much older but a little bit older than me and millie a few girls called us and they told us that um some people made comments about them in the community because they lived on their own and they would travel on their own and they kind of made comments like oh you must sleep around a lot because you have your own apartment and you like to vacation mm. on your own without like someone to be there and watch over you and yeah the like, specific mm. thing he said was you travel a lot you must fuck a lot Sorry, yeah. I don't know if there's cursing on this one. rude. Leave it out. It's like insane <laughs> to say that. But, um, but yeah, it still is a stereotype. I think that if a girl moves out of her parents' house and has her own place before she gets married, she's probably um, running a one-woman brothel from her apartment. Oh, God. And selling her <laughs> I think unfortunately that's that's probably the perception here at least from what i've i've heard from people i mean rarely rarely do you find people living on their own am i mohammed do you think that i, I it doesn't happen too often but yeah if a woman is on her own then then yeah what would the neighbors say exactly that's absolutely well, true i think yeah. there's different levels but to answer your question i don't think my parents would allow it um for me mm. to live with my boyfriend um mm. But maybe if I was engaged, I don't know. But there's different levels of like this, like that, what you're describing, like um, of strictness. Like there's the Persian parents whose kids go to college in the same area, always live at home. And then there's the Persian parents who will let their kids go to college and live somewhere else. But right after college, they usually move right back home. And that's usually mm -hmm. when these Persian girls get like a little taste of like, experimentation and, and during this time they're usually dating guys outside of their community because we don't shit where we eat as we say <laughs> um, so that's what happens but their parents still think they're like saintly virgins when they return home and then mm -hmm. um slowly but surely they'll move and in, into another man's house when they get married so uh and then there's the people i don't know like me who have lived on their own i don't know operating the one woman brothel as natalie says <laughs> oh, um but i think that's also another reason why within the persian community um people don't want to date for too long or be engaged for too long because like who's gonna believe you when you fake to be a virgin if they know that you've been dating your boyfriend for five years and you've been engaged for mm. a year and a half to two years, like no one's going to believe that you're actually a virgin. So like the only way to fake being a virgin is like, just make sure the timeline adds up and you haven't been dating the guy for too long and the engagement didn't last too long. And the wedding should be anywhere from six to a year after your engagement. If it's longer than that, no one's going to believe that you're a virgin. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. Is it a thing here? Does anybody care about virginity here? I oh, mean, for sure. I personally know many girls that in college only dated outside the community because they weren't going to sleep 
with other Persian men because they didn't want anyone within mm-hmm. the community finding out that they weren't a virgin. Oh, there you go. Wow. A lot of tactics and strategy involved here. Far extents, just trying to cover up their non-virginity mm. and still pretend to be pure so that they can marry a good guy, quote unquote. Yeah, a good yeah. guy. Yeah, good guy. Yeah. <laughs> she's Whatever. a good guy. That's a, that's like one of the phrases what, I can't so stand. In the, yeah, she's a good girl. It's like, what the fuck does that even mean? Yo, he's a good so what, guy. So what does a good guy mean? What's involved in a good guy, though? I'm interested now. What what should a guy have? You're, you're sitting on that date. You know, the guy's, the guy's learned a little bit of tar off that he knows that he's going to offer his beer to you, even though you're obviously not going to take it. And you're like, <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> he does the tar off thing. He learned. He did research. But, uh, you know, what, how's he going to score some points? with you what's what's a good guy have well i mean i would i thought uh, you wanted us to define what like people who use these terms good guy what that gives for them but i mean i think it's the same for a good girl a good guy like good girl is someone like she comes from a good family and she has like shaksiyat like she knows the right ways of socializing when she's around elder persians um and you know she's mm-hmm. high on the khanum scale like she doesn't come off like she has any sexual <laughs> tendencies I, but I also think a lot of Persian girls learn from a young age that if they come from a quote unquote good family, when I say good family, I mean a wealthy family, that they can more often than not do things that they want and not have to care what the community says because people are going to still see them as a good girl because they come from a high up social, socially economic family, um, like socially economic mm-hmm. status. Um, and then girls who come from like lower families have to act more Hanum, have to pretend to be more Hanum, have to like really watch what they do and how they dress and how they act around the community because they already are at a disadvantage. So they have to act better in order to marry higher. I think that's still no. a thing within the community. Interesting. That's way more complex than I thought it would be. So. <laughs> So what about the guys, though? What's the expectation for the guys? And then one, uh, subsequently, what's your expectations for the guys? <laughs> I mean, personally, everyone on our podcast knows that I um, I will generally give anyone a chance if someone wants to ask me out because I'm not going to be mean to anyone who's showing interest in me because that's great. You showed interest in me. Like, why? There's no reason for me to be mean to you. But generally, I don't date Persians. Mm. So, but what is the best guy to you then? I don't know. What do you look for? Me, what I look for? I look for a guy that proves to me that he sees me as an equal and he's not trying. A guy can make it very obvious when he wants a girl that's timid and that doesn't know how to do most things on her own because they enjoy the control and automatically that's a bad guy to me. A good guy to me is someone who understands that I'm very independent. And instead of being intimidated by the fact that I'm independent, they appreciate it. Mm. Nice. What about the community expectation of a good guy? I mean, there are, we. I feel like we don't talk about this enough, but we had my brother on an episode of ours recently, and I it, it should be discussed more. But there are a lot of expectations for Persian men. I'm not. We're not saying it's like a, their lives are a walk in the park. I mean, in, in some ways, their lives are easier, but of course, everything is is more complex than that. You can't say one has it harder than the other, but the financial expectations for Persian men is is really um ridiculous because they're expected to be very successful at a young age and not everyone was like born into a situation where their parents just have like some fake job lined up for them at their dad's company that's already making like millions you know what i mean like they are struggling to make a name for themselves for anyone to take them seriously. Um, So I think that's the main expectation for them to kind of have built something for themselves. And in this economy, that's really hard. For a painter or a photographer, you know, like you're not going to like, even if they have a passion for something, you're you're generally not going to see a Persian guy go and follow his dreams and care more about his happiness than money. So yeah, there's ex- expectations for them as well. How about like education? I, I hear a lot, you score well if you're a doctor, if you're a uh, uh, education, would you say that's another box to tick? 
Definitely. But also, like, if you're so wealthy and your family's good, then, like, sometimes it'll be forgiven if you're... Uh, and by, like, good, also, it's all, like, oh, your family has no diseases and you haven't been involved in any, like, public scandals. Having but there are also okay. families who do have plenty of public scandals, but they're so wealthy that everyone's like, well, it's fine, whatever. Like, it's fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're expensing the hookers? We're fine with that. <laughs> but definitely the diseases in a family. Um, I remember one time at a Friday night dinner... Or not diseases, like illnesses. Maybe that's yeah. the wrong word to use. I don't know why I'm saying this. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I've mentioned this on a few of our past episodes. Um, that one time I was at a Friday night dinner with my father's family. And my father's sister and his mom, my grandma, sat me down. And they're like, Natalie, these are the things that you should look for in a man. And I'm like, okay. They're like, no. Number one, his parents aren't divorced. Number two, he has siblings because that means that his parents had a happy marriage and they have a happy family. Number three, there's no um, illnesses in the family. Number four, his father has money. Um, and I, th I think those were like the main points. And like I looked nice. at them and I'm like, most of the points that you pointed out are things that I personally don't even have. So, mm. so like what if all the boys out there in the community, their families are telling them the same thing to look for in a girl. Who's gonna go for me? And they just like looked at me like they didn't know what to say because it was honestly ridiculous. It was like, you're telling me to judge someone based on points that I don't even personally have in my life. So like, how can I judge someone else based on that? I wouldn't want anyone judging me on that. I'd want someone to judge mm -hmm. me just based on me as a person. Yeah, so there, in this way, thing this word judgment there is so much judgment still in the community i feel like i'm subconsciously judgmental maybe in different ways like it's just it's if, if you thought that everyone was progressive in america like definitely not <laughs> generally with illnesses like i think the fear is um they're like oh if someone in the girl's family has a genetic illness they will most likely pass it on to the children that you have with them so they're not a good candidate as a mother because they won't pass on good genetics wow sounding as harsh as my grandmother god rest her soul she had a, uh, a list of things that were important for uh things that i should look out for uh when dating a woman and it, it's it's bizarre uh, i think i've have I not mentioned this before mohammed about my mm, one of the me. many stories uh from my grandmother but i think number one on the list was the uh, girl that doesn't talk too much i think was number one <laughs> and, then, no, and then and then number two was money uh they gotta have you know their family's got to do well um and then i i think number three was the ability to be able to have five children or so well, a body that can project that can pump out uh sort of you know an army of children wide hips a woman with birthing hips she really turned she really turned her nose up at a suggestion that i made of a girl and um i don't know if i can say i don't know if i want to go in there but uh, she was suggesting that the her breasts were uh not going to be enough to be able to uh, uh look after the children they were far too small <laughs> she was she was my grandmother was brutal uh something that i've noticed is uh with uh iranian girls here in Iran is contact is important a lot of contact and text messaging is not going to cut it you need calls one a day and you're doing okay more than that and you're doing really good uh, uh, Iranians in Iran uh, couples they talk a lot with one another they communicate a lot and that needs to be uh, the case would you say that that does that resonate with you is that something you're familiar with no that, that sounds like my own personal hell I generally Phone calls with anyone, it doesn't even have to be a guy that I'm seeing, I generally ignore and just watch it ring, let it go to voicemail, and then I'll text them a few minutes later and pretend like I missed the call. I'll be like, oh my God, so sorry I missed your call. What did you want to talk about? And mm -hmm. if it's something that sounds like a long conversation, I'll make something up and be like, oh, I'm so busy right now, I can't. And if it sounds like a short conversation, I'll be like, oh, okay, sure, I could call you back. Mm. I, I hate phone calls. I I love to express myself in person. I generally do talk a lot and I have a lot to talk about, but I don't know why I just hate talking on the phone. I'm the opposite. I like talking on the phone. I prefer it over text message just because like, I don't think I've really figured out that medium as a means of communication. I've always been told like, oh, you sound like angry. Like, I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm doing over time. Maybe I should take like a text etiquette class, but I'm not excelling at it. Gotta get those emojis <laughs> right. 
Yeah, I'm not using emojis. But at the same time, like the the phone call stuff, um, I I think it's strange. Unless you're long distance, I don't see why there should be so many phone calls per day. That to me is a bit mm-hmm. weird. I think like one, I guess, would be nice if you're not texting at all. But there definitely is a need. I don't want to say like, oh, girls prefer this more than boys. There's... <laughs> There are guys who are very needy and there are girls who are very needy or not needy, but like who require that kind of communication. But yeah, there's usually one person in the relationship who they need a good morning text and a good night text and things like that. But there isn't an emphasis on the need for phone Mm. calls unless you're long distance, then there, there is like a major need for FaceTiming a lot and Mm. I would rather FaceTime. I, I enjoy seeing someone's facial expressions when they talk to me. Hmm. Well, up to some level, it's understandable here because, again, uh, most of the people, I uh, assume they don't have their own places. They don't have their own privacy. Either they have to go to cafes or parks or walks to talk in person uh, they don't, uh, or well like you did this is one more thing you should expect if you're uh dating an iranian girl in iran that they have to leave soon they have to go back to their parents uh very early in the evening Good uh, point. they don't go out on weekends because they're spending quality time with parents and stuff like that but at the same time uh during the weekend and at night while they're at their parents they have they, they want to be in um touch with one another so uh texting maybe phone calls are a thing. I mean, in a lot of conservative, more traditional uh, households, phone calls will not be easily tolerated. So text messages are more of a thing. So so stickers and emojis and yeah. Yeah. Mohammed, you, you touched upon something interesting there that we wanted to talk about as well as the, what I would refer to as the pumpkin uh, scenario. I don't, think, I don't think anyone says that anymore, though. I think that was like five, six years no, ago. No, we now. do. Do we still, no, we do. Do we yeah, still say yeah. that? Do you guys know what I mean when I say the pumpkin situation? When it like gets late at night? Oh. Oh no! no. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, you whoa, 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 whoa. No. It's not that kind of show. We're not that kind of show. This is family <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my! Different God. subject. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The there we go. Yeah, the Cinderella emojis. Scene. I was like, oh god, have you guys also been sent to scary emojis? I don't know what type of emojis you've been. Know what it meant? Like, I don't know what type of emojis you've been. No, it's because like right at midnight, the car turns into a pumpkin if you don't leave. So, yeah. So, so this is normally the case that like um yeah you'll you'll be let's say in your house with your uh date or or somewhere out with your date but they'll normally need to be back before midnight um that's kind of getting a bit later and i guess it really kind of depends on who you're with sort of yeah it depends on the family depends on the age a lot of factors a lot of other factors and another one on the list that I wanted to go through uh, here is the, uh, maybe I'm being a bit harsh here, Mohammed, but um, when you're sort of getting sort of steady, I guess the Americans would call it, when you're becoming steady with someone, uh, you need to kind of drop your communication with most other girls. Is that a fair comment, Mohammed? Is that your experience? Both Iranian men and women are uh, overly jealous to my experience. And up to some extent, I gotta say, dishonest because they would always tell you no it's okay i mean we do understand the times have changed and it's not like you're anything more than friends with that other person of the opposite sex but well for me it never turned out to be true (laughs) so i was always expected to uh limit my uh contacts with my female friends to the bare minimum does that resonate with you ladies is that a uh, an expectation you might have, or is it sort of more related difference of culture, like as in Iranian Iranian culture than uh, Persian American? So personally, I've actually never been in a relationship, um, and I think that's part partly why my friends are so important to me because they are the closest thing I have. Um, so if a guy ever like said to me like, "Oh, I don't want you hanging out with your guy friends alone." unless I cheated on this person in the past, they have no reason to not trust me. So if they just don't trust me right off the bat, it's obviously because of their own insecurities and not because of something I did to them. Um, And I would tell them to figure that out on their own and fix their own insecurities and not force their insecurities onto my life and make me change my life because 
an issue that they have with themselves. Um, so that would definitely not fly with me. Um, I would see that as a huge red, red flag if someone was so insecure that they couldn't trust me to hang out with my guy friends and like not cheat on them or something. Like, I just think that's ridiculous. That'd be a huge red flag for me. Yeah, I think it, I those kinds of that. things should be warranted. Um, I That's never happened to me, or at least I can't remember. But um, I've experienced in my last relationship where my ex would like try to gaslight me and say, oh, you're just like a Persian, like jealous girl. But um, these were girls that he was not just friends with. It was suspicious. Um, mm. So I was upset. I mean, I shouldn't have said, don't do it. I should have just ended it because he was cheating. You know what I mean? Like, so, it, but you know, you're, it's yeah. like, I was a bit younger and you learned, but like, this is so common with girls where it's like their first time dealing. Maybe it's not for me. That was the first time and the only time I'll deal with something like that. But um, yeah, they'll try to tell you that you're just being Persian and jealous, um, and that they should be allowed to have friends. It's like, of course you should be allowed to have friends who are women. Like we're not animals here. You know what I mean? Like we're, we could all do that. But if, again, if it, there is a, a time where it's kind of warranted, but if you're in this place where you have to tell them not to do that, then I don't think this relationship has a future. I mean, trust is, yeah one of the most important things to have in a relationship. Actually, I'm thinking about this now. There's there's a big difference here between where we are as well, because uh, do you ladies know about door door? Do you know, have you heard of that? I'm a bit embarrassed to talk about that. Okay. There's other terms for it, but I'm not going to probably make myself look good by talking about these things. But like, it was one of the things that I noticed upon arriving in Iran. Uh, so at the time uh, in Jordan, uh, one of the places, one of the... It was the place. The place. Yeah. It was the place for the door door place. And uh, unfortunately, my father lives on, on that road. And uh, <laughs> it would take us forever to get to his house uh, when I was uh, visiting, when I first came to Iran. And that would be because there's the girls and the guys in separate cars checking each other out and exchanging numbers and who knows where it goes after oh, that. I talked and, about this and, on our last episode. It's called Machine Bozzi. Bozzi. Yeah. Bozzi, Golgasht. There's a lot of I different I think this is a different terms. kind of Machine Bozzi. I oh, think this is yeah. a less innocent okay. one. Oh, okay. I see. Well, it, it it's it's a it's a mixed bag really because uh, it's kind of business and it's not or it's somewhere between uh, the two and it still goes on and it sort of shifts around to different areas of the town and it's got its whole it's got its whole culture and subculture. I mean, but let's let's bring this back on topic because maybe that's an interesting point as far as expectation with uh, sort of intimacy as far as like just hugs kisses, holding hands. Is there anything unique there about uh, the Iranian culture? I think for our age on like in when dating, like there's just a hug uh, maybe, or like if it's not a hug, then it's just like a, like a quick, like one cheeker, like a, you know, but like just mm -hmm. like a kiss mm -hmm. on the one mm -hmm. cheek. Uh, but it's either those two, um, which I kind of like, like the guys who usually would do like the kiss, one kiss on the cheek, they're usually more like, oh, well. but like, let's not generalize. This is like me being like how guys say, Khanum, but like, they're usually a bit more like have more shakhsiyat, as I would like to say, <laughs> uh, which is rare. I'll right remember now. that. Um, I'm going to just embolden like the word shakhsiyat on my computer. They might be a bit heyvun if they're just hugging. No, I'm kidding. But, um, <laughs> but it's like, it's a bit old fashions which is what i like the kiss but um i mean again it, it depends on who they're dating i think for both persian women and persian men sometimes they're more comfortable showing mm. physical affection to someone who's not part of their community because it feels less vulnerable for them and less serious that's just something like they can just be themselves mm. and like let loose with someone who's like not in their community mm. But I don't know if that answers what you were asking. Mm -hmm. I just feel like generally um, when Persians date outside of the community, they feel more free to do whatever they're just feeling. Um, but when you're dating someone from your community and you're dating someone that like your aunts and uncles know each other or your cousins know each other, your grandparents know each other, your parents know each other, you're always going to have a little bit of a guard up and you're always going to try to act a little bit more polite than you actually are. And you're always going to hold back mm -hmm. a little bit because like 
if you do anything overly aggressive or inappropriate, um, that can get back to your parents, that can get back to your grandparents. Like you're always gonna act a little bit differently when you're dating someone from your community because there's always more of a risk of giving yourself a bad name if you don't act right. I'm trying to review uh, like comparing Persian guys to the non-Persian guys I've dated, um, which again, I think this is something that non people who aren't Persian, like the girls are attracted to them for is that they are much more confident in terms of making the face first move uh, where, you know, the, they're very quick on the first date to try to not only kiss, but like to make out with you and like be really like, they're really overly sexual immediately, um, which is like, I don't really like that personally, but I think that's something Middle Eastern only Persians. Yeah, no, I think it's something obviously like so many things we always say this, like, yeah, this is not just, but it's just because we're, we are talking Hmm. about Persians, but this extends to other cultures as well. But um, yeah, they're just uh, much more confident and, and yeah, sexual in a way. A girl I was chatting with on um, Bumble. We were, we were chatting and I said, hey, let's go for coffee. And she sort of joke. she kind of gave me a few joke responses. And I was like, I don't know, is that a yes or a no? I couldn't quite figure it out. Uh, and I said, so, so yeah, like Friday, let's meet on Friday then. And she's like, what, are you serious? And I was like, excuse me? Uh, and she's like, you see, what? How, why, would I, why would I go and meet you in a cafe? We don't even know each other. I was like, that's the whole bloody point of going to the cafe. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what? Like, I was really weirded out by that one. Um, but I, no, I th- yeah, I think she was, I don't know. Yeah, she didn't give me a number either. And she was really like, I, get, I sent her my number and she's like, why did you just do that? I was like, okay, this, yeah, let's just, okay, bye. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is too weird. I don't like when people want to get to know each other for too long over texting or phone calls before actually meeting each other. Because a lot of the time when someone's hiding behind behind like a computer screen or a phone, they can act a different way. And then when you meet them in real life, they're completely different. So I'd much rather talk for like maximum a week. And within that week, let's find a time where we're both available to just meet in person already. Yeah, I think the the problem is they call it pen friends on uh, like not looking for pen friends. I often see on uh, women's profiles in London, uh, at least. But I I sort of while I was in London and and on Tinder back in the day, I would uh, I would just very quickly move it to a. I mean, in London, it's such a small place anyway. It's quite easy to you just say like, oh, how about we meet like whatever after work for coffee or something like that and you, there was always a rhythm of what what would you know the scenario would always be like oh i need to go i'm gonna meet friends later so there was no pressure on the date but then hey i can cancel on the friends if the date's going well so there's a whole whole method that went down in in the london realm but yeah in iran it's it's probably a bit more uh drawn out uh, for multiple different reasons, many of which uh, we've spoken about. But I, I've, I've learned in my many years that, yeah, there's, you can never really know someone unless you sort of see the gestures or, you know, you can get the tone of what they're saying and how they respond to you. It's a very different type of conversation uh, when you're face to face. And and I find that it's better to just hit the fast, I mean, if you're hitting fast forward on a dating app anyway, then, you know, if you if it feels good, just, the sooner you meet them, the sooner both of you can realize whether it's worth meeting again. So uh, maybe, I don't know, that's my method. Other people have their different ways. Mohammed, what's your style? Uh, I am on a dating app maybe once a year. I go on a date maybe once in every two years. What, Mohammed? That's what I do. That's not what <laughs> I see with your screen activity. <laughs> So, no, actually, the, uh, if I meet someone, usually at parties or gatherings or whatever, or outside, if I, I like, ask someone out, uh, I don't do long um, text conversations. Just like, I ask them out for a like, coffee and talk in person for a bunch of hours. Uh, I mean, yeah, like, I cannot, like, be on the phone for too long. I cannot text for too long. It's pointless, and it's impossible to know someone over text, so... Yeah, uh, if I'm getting any serious about anything, hours, hours of talking in a cafe. Why yeah, well, I was the listening thing. to your Why episode they... about like the cafe culture. You interviewed the woman who owns Cafe 78. And I think that's so much like, it's so interesting 
um, how there's this liveliness in a way because of the restrictions that there are. People are like thirstier to just like be out, like always, you know what I mean? Like in a way they're like starving for their social interaction. So that it creates like a much more liveliness in my opinion. Whereas here we can do, go wherever we want. I mean, obviously now things are a bit different with the virus, but um I think people just resort to their phones, um, either meeting through dating apps or even on social yeah. media. I think I personally get more excited if I meet someone like IRL in real life because it feels more genuine. It feels like something more old school, feels more raw and feels like a like an actual connection as opposed to going on a date with someone that I met on an app. Um, mm. I, don't know, I just feel like it feels more exciting because it happens less often. Yeah, I think, I think as I was going to say, the uh, uh, once again, as you say, the, the virus that's not happening too much here in Iran these days, and also uh, the price of things has gone through the roof, and therefore, you know, yeah. putting on a party is a very different scenario uh, for a lot of, even, even for the very wealthy people here, uh, putting on a party, I've noticed some changes in the uh, types of food and drink on offer. Um, not being snooty, Mohammed, I'm just saying. But, uh, but the... Yeah, there, so there won't be as many of those social interactions. And I mean, there would be many gatherings of various sorts, either family or birthday parties and whatnot. And it would be very quick and straight to the point. And as you point out, yeah, like meeting someone IRL, uh, I guess you skip a skip a point of, you know, you can see their behavior or you can see their mannerisms. You can, you know, start a conversation immediately. So, uh, and thankfully in Iran, yeah, those things are more available. So. Yeah, I wouldn't say dating apps are necessarily that uh, instrumental here in Iran, and and in my experience, not really worth it in a uh, lot of cases. Yeah, because more, the, I mean, apart from the all those uh, photo filters that actually turn someone into a totally different thing. I mean, you have to see them in person to I've know how they look like. I've been using those all the time, Mohammed. What? <laughs> I've been softening my face up. I've been, you know, they're surprised when they meet me on a date. It's like, oh my god! Yeah, I thought you were eighteen. And uh, there is a there is a limitation to texting and stuff like that. So you have to see people in real life because, um, I mean, there are always like things like cultural differences. Uh, there are, um, well, people pretend all the time on first bunch of dates, and it's way worse. To, uh, in my opinion, on dating apps, and uh, there's also one other thing that comes to my mind because uh, this date, these like dating apps. I mean, uh, that uh, it kind of like opens opens up a little bit. I mean, like intercommunity thing because people don't go out with. I mean, you don't uh, in Iran at least. There are no bars, there are no pubs, uh, there are no like festivals. You go and uh, see new people, so you're always restrained to the circle of your friends or family and community. Like uh, Armenians are hanging out with their own community, uh, Jewish Iranians are hanging out with their own community. Like um, like Turks are there, and uh, when you go to a uh, when a friend, like a Kurdish friend, invites you, you see like ninety percent of the people. People at their party are Kurdish, maybe. Well, me, I mean, David and I, we've been hanging out with more cosmopolitan circles, so it's a little bit different. But uh, like these dating apps also just... Yeah, take you outside of that, I guess. Actually, on that front, that's a good point because I've kind of learned a lot about this place by going outside of my bubble for meeting people mm. uh, on dating apps. So people that I r literally really would never meet in any of the circles. And, and I, yeah, I, I've appreciated that. That's that's been a good thing. Good point there, uh, Mohammed. You you touched upon a uh, a sort of uh, a difference there, Mohammed. That maybe sort of is a difference for you girls as well. That is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, your Jewish Persian, uh, and I guess that in itself brings a sort of culture within a culture. Uh, am I right? Does that limit things or make things more difficult? Like my father, for example, he's he's not a religious man. He's just very old fashioned. So to him, like religion is just like everything's the same. It all rooted from the same place. He's not strict because he's religious and because we're Jewish. He's strict just because he's an old fashioned Iranian man. So for me, it was always more, I noticed more pressure 
from the fact that I was Iranian more so than the fact that I was Jewish because like a lot of other Jewish communities in New York, like the like Moroccan or Syrian, um, no, Syrians actually probably way more old fashioned than we are. They're they're also a very intense community. But there are certain communities that they're just more relaxed. And like the Persian community just has a stereotype and a higher standard for the girls within the community. So there's like a Persian pride on the top of other traditions. Yeah. My my family, uh, Turk Azari, uh, which I found out when I arrived in this country, I'm like, what? I thought we were Iranian. They're like, oh, you kind of are, but <laughs> you know, you're Turk Azari. I'm like, I have no idea what that is, but great that's brilliant um but yeah there's often a lot of talk about marrying the Turk girl and i think what how does the phrase go muhammad it's like you take a Turk girl but never give a Turk girl or some there's some phrase about like you know that's the first time i'm hearing so i think I don't my family the Turks like get it. so much hate though i know <laughs> like, I how so? have... who's hating on the turks we run the show here what, what are you talking about when you want to say something, <laughs> like an airhead or being stupid you're saying you say like Turk oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. yeah. don't say that yeah. like it's really offensive no, no, no. Yeah. that's you can't say that we can say that that's how that's how these are our jokes not yours yeah <laughs> we were talking Talking about that earlier, Muhammad. These, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can joke about those things. Yeah, we can use the T word. Yeah, you we can. can use the T word. You can't <laughs> use the T word. Uh, something that my grandmother, actually, no, it was my uncle, used to say. Uh, he'd always say, like, marry a girl uh, that doesn't have any sisters, uh, and, he, and you'll live a <laughs> you'll live an easy life. Um, what? No, because then then there's no comparison. Firstly, so it's like you know this, you know, oh. the sisters driving a BMW don't have to get a Mercedes. That's you know. Uh, so you don't have to try and outspend the indoors and, or, you know, the other sort of, you know, your brother-in-law or whatever it will be. Yeah, that's a, that's an important one. Um, but Iranians have large families mostly here. It doesn't happen that much. Is that a, uh, actually an interesting side point, sorry, I'm dragging it out now, the show, but as, as far as expectation for, uh, children, uh, is that something discussed early on in dating? Is there other expectations? I think generally, like the expectation, I think any expectation in the Persian community is that like nothing should take too long. And if it's taking you too long, there must be a problem. So people love to start rumors in the community. Like if a girl's getting older and she's not dating or she's not married, maybe she's a lesbian. Or if Mm. a girl is married and she waited five years before she decided to have a kid, maybe she's having trouble getting pregnant. Like there's just like, there's always something that someone has to make up instead of just realizing that maybe kids aren't for everyone or maybe marriage isn't for everyone. But like, I hear a lot within the community, people like will start rumors. Like if something's not happening right away, they're like, oh, there must be an issue. Yeah, I hear those Mm. things. As far as like whether that comes up in dating, uh, there's two types of dating again, like with Persians. I mean, the dates I've gone on with Persian men, like that did not come up, but again, it didn't go too far. Um, Mm. Like they're a bit more modern, like that's not going to come up or, um, but then I know that there are other uh, men or women who they could be my age or they could be older. Uh, It's usually like if they're a bit older um, or maybe not, maybe I'm just immature, but uh, (laughs) the conversation, if they're dating for marriage, then the conversation I think comes up fairly quickly. Uh, So ladies, we won't take up too much more of your time. Uh, Let's get to the point where we give a kind of a kind of a summary here for our audience as to uh, maybe a couple of sentences uh, from each of you if we can condense it if it goes on don't worry but uh, sort of not words of warning but sort of things that a sort of someone who's not familiar with Persian culture Iranian culture something that they should be aware of if they are about to have uh, a date so with basically Iranian. what they're signing up for if they're dating a Persian man or a woman um i mean different things if you're dating a persian if you're dating a persian woman i could easily tell you uh you better have confidence and be secure in yourself or else you're just gonna like go home crying um (laughs) and like not be easily intimidated because all persian girls i know are intimidating even the ones who aren't aware of it 
Um, and yeah, that would be my main thing for, for dating a Persian woman. Um, and also to just remember to be generous on the date. Uh, not like overly, hmm. I'm not saying like buy them the most expensive wine, but like whatever pay mm -hmm. like at the minimum mm -hmm. like i don't know just looking out uh, I, I, I don't know I'd, if i I'd sound be really like happy to be able to buy one now mm. <laughs> but um and then as far as like as persian men i think um like they one thing that they do a lot on dates is like you can't tell if they're being serious or not they like say these things kind of in a joking way and i think it's to see if you'll fall bait for them to, for this to reveal more about yourself than you normally would so just like don't take anything they say too seriously take it with a grain of salt that's just them kind of being playful um mm. yeah that would be my main that was great excellent um, I guess my warning to any non-Persian girls going out with Persian men, don't be fooled by their chivalry and don't be fooled by mm. them opening the door for you and, um, I don't know, just anything that they do. It's just all out of the culture. It's just like I don't want to call it fake politeness, but it's just something that's expected in our culture to be extra polite and extra caring in that way and do a lot mm -hmm. of things that a lot of men today don't do. But it doesn't necessarily mean that this person is super interested in you or that this person is a super nice person. It's just part of the culture. Um, so don't get overly excited over things like that. Um, and then in regards to dating a Persian girl, I think... I think what Millie said is correct, that they can be very intimidating. I think because it's a different culture, like they, like in the Persian culture, like a man, like a Persian man is expected to be like really manly. So they're used to like very manly men that like get things done and they're like, okay, I'm setting up the date. I'm choosing the place. This is the best place. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to take you. I'm going to do everything. So like when a Persian girl goes out with a guy and the guy's like, Oh, where do you want to go? Like, Oh, do you have any recommendations? Like, I feel like that's an automatic turn off for any Persian girl. Persian girl wants a guy to kind of be in control and take over everything and get everything done. Um, so that'd be no advice to any no guy tent. dating a Persian girl. Don't don't ask her where she wants to go for dinner. Tell her where she wants to go for dinner. Wow, that was incredible. So thanks ever so much for that amazing advice. Help our audience out here by letting them know where they can follow you. Where where should they go to? Natalie, do you want to plug us? You can follow us on Instagram at Persian Girl Podcast. Uh, we're also on Spotify and we're on the Apple Podcast app. Oh, don't forget to our Patreon. Which our is Patreon. Patreon, yeah. Go for the third tier. I recommend. Slash Persian Girl Podcast. Yeah, the third yeah, tier is definitely the best one. It's um, the Doodle Tala tier. The Doodle Tala. <laughs> We're not going to translate what that is. Uh, it's a basic concept of your penis is made of gold, therefore it's completely <laughs> useless. So those in our so so th those in our audience who have a golden penis, uh, you know where to go and take your golden penis. Go to the third tier of the Patreon for Persian Girls <laughs> podcast. Uh, thanks ever so much for being on the show. It's uh, great after all the planning that went into uh, trying to get us in one place <laughs> on various recording devices. It's been a bit tricky, but uh, that has exceeded any expectation uh, that I had that was incredible thanks ever so much for your uh, amazing words of wisdom uh, and thank you for being so generous with your time today so well we would love so to have you on our podcast so yeah. thank you again for having us it would be an honor looking forward to that excellent okay ladies well uh, you take care all the best and uh, until the next show all right Bye. 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 Bye.